Got time for another Star Talk explainer. Yeah. Yeah, but I heard you had something neat in you. What's that? Well, it's, uh, you know, the, the all the Oppenheimer craze is happening right now. And, you know, when you get down to the science of that, you're talking about fission and fusion. Now, you know, so what is the difference between fission and fusion? I mean, of course, I, I know. I already know. I'm just asking for all those people that are going to the movie and then... Oh, just, it's for other right, people. Yeah, I think, you know, I, there's a lot of people going to the movie and they don't even know the difference between <laughs> fission and fusion. I'm just like, we should not allow those people to remain ignorant. <laughs> We should let those people know the difference between fission and fusion. Okay. All right. So the periodic table is a sequence of nuclear count of protons. From hydrogen, which has one proton, helium, two protons, lithium, three protons. Right. Uh, you just count them up all the way, and you keep going. Okay. It turns out the nuclei of atoms store energy. That's not much different philosophically from molecules storing energy. Right. So gasoline molecule stores energy. It's just sitting there as this liquid minding its own business. Yep. Wait, you take a match, bada bing, you release the energy that was in the molecules. Now that's a fire. Okay, so so this idea that there's energy to be released in the atom that's not so weird when you think about it. Right, right. Okay? So the question is, how do you get access to this energy? Out of the atom. What we learned slowly in the late 1800s and early 1900s is that some atoms are not stable. A version of uranium is not stable. When I say a version, it's one that has a different number of neutrons in the nucleus. But it's still uranium because it has 92 protons in the nucleus. All right? So you can vary the number of neutrons, and those are called isotopes. Mm -hmm. An isotope is the same atom, but different numbers of, 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 of neutrons in the nucleus. When you do that, they have different, slightly different properties. Right. So there's a version of uranium that spontaneously breaks into two other atoms and releases energy. So that's what we call radioactivity. If an element is radioactive, it is splitting on its own and releasing energy, and the thing that it's in will start feeling hot. Oh. Okay? So that splitting of an atom is called fission. Okay. Fission. Now let's go to the low end. I can't break hydrogen. It's only one proton. When you're at the low end, you can cram the elements together so that they make a heavier element. Uh -huh. When you do that, the mass of the heavier element is less than the sum of the parts. Where did the mass go? It must have been released as energy. According to whose equation? Einstein E equals MC squared. There you go. Energy and mass are equivalent. If you lose mass through this phenomenon, you gain energy out the other side of the equation. So, I take four hydrogen atoms, cram them together to make a full-blooded helium atom, which has two protons and two neutrons. If I, why doesn't it have four protons? Two of the protons turned into neutrons spontaneously. Look at that. That's what they did. Oh, now, wait a minute. What about, didn't they have a positive charge? And now you have a neutron that has, like, no charge? What happened to the charge? Did it just disappear? What happened? Nope. All, all the, the budgets are kept clean in the accounting ledgers of particle physics. So, a positive charge was retained by the emission of a positron, the antimatter version of an electron. So, a proton becomes a neutron and a positron. Now, a positron is antimatter. Mm. So if you're antimatter, you are leading a very risky life in a universe of matter. Because if you encounter an electron, you annihilate and become pure energy. Right. So not only does the nucleus release energy, because the mass it has less mass, the two protons and two neutrons, you also get energy from the annihilation of the positron. Okay, so make a, 
a long story simple, you can take light atoms, cram them together, right. make heavier atoms, and energy gets released. You can combine hydrogen to get helium. You can combine helium to get carbon. So that is called thermo. It takes high energy to do this. Nuclear, nucleus of an atom. Fusion, you're bringing them together. Thermonuclear fusion. Light elements become heavier. That's our sun. Our sun does that. That's what our sun does. Every day. It converts wow. hydrogen into helium. Releasing energy. Bathing us in warmth. At the high end, you split atoms, and they release energy. Okay? You want to make a weapon that taps the energy of the nucleus. Okay? okay? Well, it takes very high temperature to fuse hydrogen. The sun does it under high temperature and high pressure. Right. Meanwhile, uranium is falling apart for free. Doing, it's, doing it on its own. <laughs> no, on its own. And it's like, okay. I'm uranium. I'm just an energy whore, baby. I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> All on its own. <laughs> so, it turns out when uranium unstably splits, it releases a neutron. Well, wait a minute. Here's something interesting. If it splits, did I wait around for the next atom to split? Or can I force a split? It turns out, if you do the equation, one splitting atom releasing a neutron can split another, another atom. atom. So if you, if you split two, if two neutrons come out, That'll get split and dense enough. You don't want it escaping. The, the material has to be dense enough so you guarantee it's going to hit another atom. Right. Then you split that, and it goes from 1 to 2 to 4 to 8 to 16, and you get a runaway chain reaction. There you go. Look, oh, my God. That's so what, so that's what the bomb is. Calculated that. Damn. And if you, if you purify your isotope of uranium, you cram it down, and you initiate that, with a trigger, you have an atomic bomb. Look at that. So it's you're you're looking at a tremendous release of energy from something very small. Yes, and it, it all happens and all in instantaneously. Basically, bow, 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 bow. correct chain reaction. Wow. Yes. Oh my God! First of all, who? How do you think of that? <laughs> these, these are scientists. That's what I'm saying. How these are my people. Who, They're my who, brethren. Who even thinks of this? this? Well, go back. Who thought of a bow and arrow? Right. Who thought of gunpowder to put in a projectile uh, right. to go. send out of a gun? That's who right. thought of missiles? Who thought of, you know, like, you, let's go back, catapults, right? right. And, yeah. You know, this is... That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. disturbingly amazing. It's disturbingly amazing. Correct. Okay, so you can get a certain amount of energy out of that, and it takes effort to purify the uranium, all right? Because you got to, you need your uranium mine, and they got to make sure there's just that one isotope, because only that one isotope will do this, not the other ones. This is why you use centrifuges. Right. For, why do you have a centrifuge? Because one isotope is slightly more massive than the other. And so you centrifuge it, and the heavier isotope goes to the bottom, and the lighter ones go to the top. Then you skim off the top, centrifuge it again, and it becomes purer and purer and purer. Mm. Did you see Top Gun Maverick? No. The main point of the film, Top Gun Maverick, is they have to take out this underground bunker that's purifying uranium. Okay. There's only one reason to, to do that, because you're going to make a bomb with it. There's, right. there's no other reason to have purified, uh, fiz fissionable uranium. Okay. Right. So what is more powerful, fission? Or fusion. All right. So it turns out a fusion bomb, which is what the sun does, can become way more. You can make bombs of different sizes, but sky is the limit practically with a fusion bomb. Okay. Whoa. Starting with hydrogen. And you, hydrogen goes to healing, but you need, a, a, it, it has to be small enough. And again, it has to be able to be self-driven once you start it. Okay, so the bombs that were dropped over uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki were 10, 20-ish kilotons of TNT. In fusion bombs, which came later, those were not perfected until like the you know, late 40s, early 50s, when we were working on them and finally tested them. Those are capable of megatons of power. So instead of kilotons, you have megatons a thousand times more powerful. Because apparently one bomb leveling a city was not powerful enough in the Cold War. 
And so that's why they say the 20th century was the century of the physicist, because the Cold War defined geopolitics, and the Cold War came about because of the handiwork of physicists, combined with engineers to actually make the bomb. And so, yeah, there's uh, a nuclear bomb will not only uh, ignite the, the pulse of, of, of energy is enough to sort of incinerate whatever is in a sight line to it, but then there's the blast wave that'll completely level anything that happens after that. Because the pulse happens at the speed of light, the blast wave moves at the speed of sound, which is slower. So if you're not incinerated, the blast wave will take you out, basically. Wow. And one of the concerns about, you want to talk about climate change, is if, if you target a city, it's one thing if you target forests. Well, then you incinerate the forests, and that'll put soot into the air, wreaking havoc with our climate. If you do it over cities, as, let's take L.A., for example, where there's all these freeways, if the freeways are made of asphalt, if, it's possible for the asphalt to catch fire. Yes, and you literally rain fire from the explosion. Correct. Itself. And that, you want to talk about further disrupting the climate. I know if you were where the blast wave was, you're not really concerned about the climate. You're concerned about whether you were vaporized or not. But the rest of the world would then feel this. So uh, this is, I mean, it's an extraordinary uh, power that we wield. And we rapidly realized we needed some way to regulate it. So we had these test ban treaties and mm -hmm. this sort of thing. Right. And, uh, and now we have Kim Jong-un. <laughs> Stop. You know? So Stop. what could go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? Oh, and by the way, <laughs> early in this, they did a calculation. They said, if we set off a chain reaction in this bomb, will that chain reaction continue into our atmosphere? Oh, right. Because the water molecules in the atmosphere, there's hydrogen in the water molecules, there's hydrogen in the oceans. Okay? Would this start a chain reaction and completely incinerate our atmosphere and our oceans? So you can do a calculation and show that it's not likely. Okay. Well, that's comforting. <laughs> <laughs> well, the problem in, in physics, every calculation has... A statistic, especially in quantum physics, there's a statistical probability that could be vanishingly small, but if you're honest, you'd report that even though it's vanishingly small. So part of the problem is in order to have this runaway fusion, you need the concentration of materials for that to happen. And you don't get that in the oceans. Yeah, atmosphere, atmosphere or the oceans, right? Right. That's part of the problem. Oh man, I got to tell you, this is I I I I haven't seen the movie, but I don't want to now. No, <laughs> I'm just saying. I have not seen Oppenheimer, but I do not want to now. That this is frightening. Uh, yeah, and it's all and what it's all the energy that comes out of e equals mc squared. Yeah, and Einstein himself, he's he he so sent a letter to Roosevelt saying, "I think the Nazis are working on this." We should, too, okay? Nice. Then we start the Manhattan Project, but then he realized maybe, you know, this is not a good thing, all right? Plus, we learned that the Nazis were not really close to it. Uh, that was an occasion to say, okay, we're done here. Let's re resort to conventional weapons, and we didn't. We pursued it. Wow. The frontier of physics. Damn. Oh, well. Welcome to human civilization. Hey, I'm going to sleep really well tonight, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, Chuck. Well, you started it with your question here. This is Very true. Much. I asked for this, so you I deserve every bit of it. All right. All right. That's all the time we have. That's been another Star Talk Explainer. Always good to have you, Chuck. Always a pleasure. All right. Until next time, Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Keep looking up.